Shalom. Tov. This is David Wilder standing outside the Shuk in Hebron. This is what's uh, usually called the Avram Avinu neighborhood. And uh, right next to me is a building that has two families living in it that are due to be expelled tomorrow night. Um, the land inside in the Avram Avinu was purchased by Jews here in 1540. Jews who had been expelled from Spain in uh, 1492. Went there, went to Turkey in 1540. They purchased this land here from the uh, a Jewish sect that had basically died out by then, and uh, <coughs> lived here for almost 500 years until 1929. The land outside here, where I'm standing, was purchased by a Jew named Chaim Bajayo near 1807. Uh, and right in back of me, over in the corner, was the home of Rabbi Eliyahu Mani, very for very important rabbi in Hebron in the early middle 1800s. His home was here and his synagogue was here. When we came back here in 1967, we found here total ruins. Nothing was left of the neighborhood. The synagogue that had been built in the 1500s had been turned into a sheep sty. And outside here where we're standing was an open market, a uh, vegetable market. This area outside here was a wholesale market. On the other side was a retail market. Uh, and the Israeli government left this open until the early 1990s, going into the 2000s, when for security reasons they had no choice but to close it. All of the leases that had been here on the buildings uh, ran out so that the buildings were left under the legal auspices of the Israeli government. We asked permission to use these buildings, and that permission was denied, of course, for political reasons. In, uh, Beginning in the end of the year 2000, in uh, September, October of the year 2000, the Oslo War began. The Arabs started to shoot at us from the hills above, and that culminated with the murder of a 10-month-old infant named Chalhevit Pass in uh, the end of March, the year 2001. The Israeli government did not react. They didn't send up the troops. Uh, nothing was done. At that point, we decided there had to be a reaction, and people moved into these two structures. Uh, there was nothing there at the time. There were vegetable stalls. There were concrete walls and floors and nothing else. We invested a tremendous amount of money here, and we turned these buildings into beautiful apartments. There were nine families that lived here, and a Torah study hall in shall have its memory. And people lived here for five years. Of course, this immediately started to roll around in the courts, uh, and a military appeals court ruled that the land where I'm standing right here legally belongs to the Jewish community here and they said that the buildings themselves come within the auspices of the custodian for abandoned property of the state of Israel. They recommended that these buildings be leased to us. The Attorney General at the time decided that that was something that could not be done to let the Jews live here and he uh, refused to allow that. People lived here for five years Following the expulsion from Gush Katif two years ago, it was decided that the time had come to throw us out of these buildings also. A year and a half ago, we were given expulsion notices. The night before the expulsion was to take place, we had a meeting with a very, very important rabbi, uh, <laughs> very important uh, general, the general in charge of all the forces in Judea and Samaria. His name was General Yehia Golan, and he offered us a deal. He said that if we moved out voluntarily, they would set it up so that we'd be able to move back in in a very short period of time, in their, in their language, in their words, legally. Uh, it would take a short period of time, we'd be back in. We had a meeting here in Hebron in the middle of the night. We got people out of bed, we had a debate and a vote, and it was decided to accept the deal. And the next day, the families moved out. By the end of the week, there was nothing left here. As soon as it hit the press, the Israeli Attorney General Manny Mazuz said that there had never been a deal made. Shortly after that, he said that there was a deal, but he voided it, saying the general who made it, Yair Golan, had no authority to do so. This in spite of the fact that he was on the phone with the defense ministry the entire time he was meeting with us in order to make sure that all he was agreeing to would be okayed by them. Uh, and this is what happened to the deal they made with us. Um, <clears throat> about six months ago, two of the families that had moved out had nowhere to live. Both women had given birth. One family had absolutely no place to live. The other family had a very small apartment. And realizing that the deal that had been made wasn't going to be carried out, they moved back in. They lived here for about three months before they were discovered. When they were discovered, of course, this again went into the courts. Expulsion notices were issued. And two weeks ago, we were notified that we were going to be expelled. 
Uh, we, of course, told them the government, we refused to leave of our own volition. Uh, we had offered various compromises via the former Ministry of, Minister of Justice, Yaakov Neaman, legal experts, including legal advisors within the defense establishment, said that there was no reason to expel us. Legally, a solution could be worked out that would be satisfied, satisfactory to everybody. However, last week the defense minister, Ehud Barak, decided that it was no-go. We had to be forcefully thrown out. And right now we've started to see the police come in, the riot squad, soldiers. They've declared some of this area a closed military zone. And the timetable that we know of is that tomorrow night they're supposed to bring in a thousand forces to throw out two families. We have said that we will not leave voluntarily. We do not want to initiate violence. We know that these forces come in. They're extremely violent. They bring in hard rubber batons. They beat people. Uh, and we very, very much hope that they, uh, they'll refrain from this violence because we really do not want it to happen. Our resistance is civil disobedience. These are our homes. It's Jewish property. And we have to remember that only a few days ago was the 78th anniversary of the riots in 1929, which left 67 Jews dead and the rest of the community expelled. Then it was the British and the Mufti. Today it's the Israeli government. This is David Wilder from Hebron.